Well, here we are again. Thank you to everyone who participated by submitting your questions on Twitter for the weekly Q&A. At OTR Essential is the Twitter handle. You should follow it. So that way, when asked for your Q&A questions, you can actually send them off and you might get them answered here on the channel. Yeah. You should smash that subscribe button too if it happens to be your first time stumbling into it. Or if you're one of those people that weirdly, like, comes and watches a lot of my videos and doesn't subscribe, why don't you just go ahead and do it? Like, do the bad thing, all right? So part two of the Q&A is here. Let's go ahead and get started at the Big D, 9817-8301. Isn't it crazy how a TNA guy in AJ Styles uh, could be so successful in his WWE run? A two-time WWE champion, three-time U.S. champion, one-time IC champion, one-time tag champion, and a WrestleMania main eventer with the Boneyard match. Technically all true. Um, It is a little bit, yes. I would agree with you. Because for years... WWE, it felt like, basically refused. Like, there was this period of time for several years where they really weren't bringing in guys straight from TNA. They weren't really acknowledging or talking about TNA. And then all of a sudden, you get the guy, the face that ran the place, you know, and AJ Styles. And he's had a good run, man. He really has. He's been successful. So it has caught me a little off guard. I did not think he was going to get that level of respect for Vince or Hunter or from Kevin Dunn or the company as a whole. I really didn't think so. Um, at Wrestling Rants asks, rank the items from most to least holes. Oh, God. Swiss cheese, the Grand Canyon, Dino Bravo, WWE Creative, AEW Creative, the arguments that Snook- Snooka didn't kill Nancy, <laughs> the arguments of people saying Benoit deserves the Hall of Fame induction. Oh, God. Most holes, Dino Bravo. Bang, bang, he did. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, the arguments that Snooka didn't kill Nancy. Number three, the arguments of people saying Benoit deserves a Hall of Fame induction. Yes, let's induct the wife and child killer into the Hall of Fame, you clowns. Then after that, most to least, it's Dino Bravo. It's the Snooka argument. It's the Benoit argument. And then it's WWE Creative. AEW Creative, Swiss Cheese, and the Grand Canyon? That's a fantastic question. For that, I thank you. And furthermore, I just realized something. I don't follow you on Twitter, Wrestling Rants. As a result, because of your fantastic question, that has now been rectified. Congratulations, OTR Essential now follows you. Apoor Shankar 1 asked, Hogan's called out for not putting people over, but Austin has always escaped that conversation somehow. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, he hardly put people over, including The Rock, who was the second most over babyface at the time, some might argue the most, up until his very last match when it clearly didn't matter anymore. Thoughts? It almost feels like you're summarizing, like taking cliff notes of stuff I've said for years and packaging up it as a question and presenting it back to me. I love it! The validation of ego and arrogance is magnificent! Yeah, Hogan's a politicker. He was, and, you know, he would kill things, and he could be tough to do business with, but... He's not the only one. Like, and even, you know, Shawn Michaels, people talk about how he was a politicker and talk about the clique and everything. They talk about Hall and they talk about Nash and all those people deserve some criticism for that shit. And people will talk about Cena and Orton over the years, especially Cena and by God, fucking meriting so. They'll talk about God himself, Hug, Triple H, and again, totally merited and justified. People like Bret Hart, though, somewhat escaped that in terms of the politicker label. But the one that is always mystified and befuddled me is Austin. Like you even you you even know the story. He refused to do the job to Triple H at SummerSlam '99. He said, "I'm not putting him over." He's the one that went home because he didn't like to create a vision of him losing a King of the Ring qualifier match on Raw to Brock Lesnar. While I'm not saying I disagree with his thought process at the time, because he was right to be clear. Austin had a really bad history of playing some politics, you know, which, as white hot as he was for a period of time, I understand it. Like, you don't want to cook the fucking golden goose when you don't need to. It's still laying the damn golden eggs. But, yeah, like, let's not pretend like Austin was this great hero. He was just as bad as many of the other ones that we talk about. At Psycho Walker, how do you feel about Impact Wrestling in AAA Mexico allowing the AEW World Champion... Kenny Omega, to represent them as their respected world champions. I think it's desperate, and I think it's dumb, and I don't really think it's doing anything to elevate their profile, frankly. It's a Mark move done by Marks? 
that pops a few other marks and that's fucking it. There is nothing about this that is raising the profile of those other companies. There is nothing about this that elevates the prestige of those other belts. There is nothing about this that is really driving or pushing the needle anywhere from a business standpoint. It's just dumb. And they need to stop doing that shit. At EJ Dennis 96, should Hulk Hogan versus Brock Lesnar have happened at SummerSlam 2002 instead of Brock versus Rock? I think that's one of those things that if you're talking about in an ideal world, like what would you do? And you might sit there and say, okay, I'm going to have Brock submit Hogan via bear hug at SummerSlam. And then you might come back a couple months later at Survivor Series 2002 and you're going to have Lesnar win the belt from The Rock there. But, you know, the timing of things didn't really work out at the time, like in terms of what Hogan had committed to and what Rock was going to do post SummerSlam. So, in an ideal world, yes, I would have not wanted to burn that on a SmackDown, talking about uh, Lesnar submitting Hogan with a bear hug. Um, I would have rather done that at a big four pay-per-view, but it just didn't work out that way at the time. Um, at WestWe122, are there any videos you look back on that you hate the fact you were right about? Probably a lot of them. I tend not to try and think back too much on the past, um, specifically when it comes to the videos. Because if I go back and watch some of the old ones, I'll be like, God damn, I was prophetic. And other ones, I'm going to cringe. Uh, but it's just not particularly productive. Like, that work's done. It's out there. And consume it. Um, oh, old, old videos like 15 Reasons Randy Orton Sucks. Yeah, I was absolutely fucking right about that. And that I'm proud of that piece of work, you know? Like, that's, that's proud work for me. Uh, but there are plenty of ones. That one I don't hate that I was right about, though. That's for sure. Um... There are plenty of videos over the years that I think I could look back on and say I hate the fact that I was right about them. Uh, James Isabel, 20. Why do you think AEW has good matches with bad or hilarious finishes? Um, I think that's a problem in wrestling now. Like So many of these guys and gals are all thinking about the spots and having to get all of their shit in. And then when you've done all this crazy kind of off-the-wall, like out-there bullshit... A lot of what you're going to do for a finish short of paralysis and or death is going to feel like a wet fart by comparison. Like you got guys in matches kicking out of Canadian destroyers and tombstone type pile drivers and, you know, getting suplexed on the fucking ring apron and flying out and getting, you know, landing on the concrete and all this other crap. Well, then when you actually get to the fucking finish, like the finish is stupid. Because you sat there and said, of all the bullshit that they did, this is what's going to finally end it? So the finishers don't match up in a lot of ways in terms of the consequence and significance of the other moves performed during the match. There's no storytelling dynamics. There's no psychology employed during the matches. So you don't really know a lot of times. Like, you used to be able to watch a lot more wrestling. You can still see it sometimes now, but you used to be able to watch wrestling a lot more and you would really start to get the feel of, like, hey... I know where this match is going. This is the beginning. This is the middle. This is where it turns. And here's your going home finishing sequence. Now you sit there and you think, hey, this is the time to go home. No, we're going to fucking kick out of 10 more false finishes and bullshit. And you got another 10 minutes of match to go. So that's, that's why it happens. That's the problem. It's bullshit like that. At J Mixtape, a list of people who weren't world champion who you feel should have been. Also, should Shelton Benjamin and Jeff Hardy have been treated better? Uh, yes to Shelton Benjamin. You can't say Jeff Hardy was treated poorly over the years. Like, he got plenty of opportunities. He got plenty of top spots. Shelton Benjamin, I would agree, yes, he should have. A list of people who weren't world champion who I feel should have been. I think I've done a couple of different videos just on black wrestlers that should have been world champion. I'm sure there are other wrestl videos over the years that I've done talking about, you know, the guys like the Mr. Perfects of the world and the Scott Halls of the world, etc. So... You know, some of those types of people, not the only ones, but those are just some of the ones that are um, prevalent in my mind right now. Next up, Eric Rivera Cueva. Now, you're lucky that I'm going to edit this question because this is ridiculous. You referred to Reign of Terror with Roman? Like, you really should be ashamed of yourself. So, how long... Will the super terrific Roman Reigns fun time with him as the Universal Champion last? 
you got plenty of time, several more months at least of it. Shit, I'd run. I might run it all back all the way to WrestleMania next year, like based off the way it's going. Reigns of Terror. The hell was wrong with you, Eric? Eric, it's horrible. The X Man Two Thousand. Hey, Schleich Daddy, what are your favorite and least favorite years for WWE Backlash? I appreciate that as I get older, you guys are even assuming that I remember every single one of these older pay-per-views and especially the non-Big Four pay-per-views. Like, I appreciate the, the props there, but, um, yeah, no. <laughs> I can tell you. I'd have to go back and watch all of them to see, like, one of my favorites again. Oh, I'm sorry. At Chrysler Official... Young Rock is a show about wrestling that doubles the viewership of wrestling shows. Will WWE realize there's people out there wanting to see a good story with wrestlers on it? Um, we're going to ignore your blasphemous bullshit Triple H question. We're going to focus on the first question there, Chrysler. And, yeah, well, I mean, you're also talking about a show that's based around the life of The Rock. You know, like, that matters a little bit. Um, but I just don't know that WWE cares anymore. They're just curious of putting out just enough content that they can continue to maintain a certain number of viewership so that way they can continue to generate their revenues and massive profits. They just don't have the personal and professional pride to put out the best possible product anymore. They don't. And they can't. And you can look at the product and clearly see that to be true. It's a shame, but that's what it is. There's, what else can you really say? Uh, at BPath00, who would you build up to take the title off Lashley? And what timeline would you set up for the change to take place? Around SummerSlam, Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, or WrestleMania? Um, I'd be more concerned about building up interesting, credible challenges for Bobby Lashley and putting him in good stories while he's champion. Like, it's weird sometimes. Like, I get the notion, and I've talked about it in the past, like, you should be able to have a vision of, like, this is what you're looking at, and here's your future vision. And I, and I understand the importance of that, and I don't fundamentally disagree with that, but there's also a piece of, we're looking to put a bow on it and end it when we should be talking about how to make it the best it possibly can be. Because you might go along and say, hey, they're thinking Bobby Lashley goes until SummerSlam, loses to a Brock Lesnar. Okay, let's just say that. But then all of a sudden it goes along and you realize, hey, no, we don't want to do that, and we want to have him beat somebody else at SummerSlam. Or we want to have him beat Brock Lesnar, and we're thinking about him carrying this belt uh, more through 2021. Like, you shouldn't be so predetermined and defined by that arbitrary deadline that you can't adjust to it. Um, let's see here. Blayin Boy 87 what is Roman's faction going to be called when uh, Jimmy Uso sees sense and falls in line? I appreciate the assumptiveness there. The A, B, C, always be closing. A, always B, B, C, closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. I don't know what that faction's name is going to be. You could do... <laughs> <laughs> a tribe called Reigns. I don't fucking know. Y'all, how about y'all tell me? What should that group's name be? Um, at Spawn4288, can you see MLW being competition to AEW when they premiere on Vice? That's probably a big stretch. That's probably a big stretch. Um, big Snow, with how great his Tribal Chief run has been, would you take Roman over John Cena all time? Yes, because... Roman doesn't tend to bury a bunch of people. At Mo Benny 99 what were your thoughts on the tag team of Paul London and D. Brian Kendrick back, back in the day? Did you like them, and did you think they were underutilized? Uh, it's just a random-ass weird question. That's what I love about some of these Q&As. You guys ask some of these random-ass, weird-ass, I would never think about it type of questions. Yeah, I do think they were maybe a un little underutilized. They certainly didn't have, like, superstar power, but I've always had respect for Brian Kendrick as a performer, so I do think they were a little underutilized. Uh, Dylan Schwartz with a great question. Why did Mania 19 do such a poor buy rate? I don't know. Like, there were a lot of things going into that. Like, you had star power. You had Rock and Austin. You had Vince and Hogan. You had the young future, you know, of face of the company and Brock Lesnar taking on Kurt Angle. You had the, trip, or the Shawn Michaels fucking... Um, Chris Jericho match. Like you had this stuff that was appealing to a wide swath of fans and it just did not connect. It did not resonate. I'll, it's one of life's great mysteries as to why it just didn't connect. It just didn't. 
I would have thought it would have done a much better buy rate than what it ultimately did. At KP stands, if Roman goes over the rock at WrestleMania 38, who does he eventually drop the title to? Um, good question. I don't know if that person has shown themselves as of yet. Uh, let's see here. H Review 73. Will you do a raw retro review for June 7th, 1999 when Vince was revealed as the higher power? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. At Bag Backup Hangman, if AEW and WWE did a crossover show, what's your main event? Jade Cargill versus Bianca Belair. Yes. That's probably my main event, main event. Mm-hmm. You got a problem with that? <sighs> and then, let's see here. We got anything else? Harding Everett. What did you think of The Undertaker, Muhammad, Muhammad Hassan? I just cannot talk tonight. What did you think about The Undertaker, Muhammad Hassan feud in 2005? Shame we didn't get to see it fully play out. Fuck UPN for playing that pussy card. It was bullshit. Um, I think we're at the limit of my time here. I'm sorry I didn't get to all the questions. Thank you guys for submitting those that you did. Make sure you, after checking out this one, you go click and watch part one of the weekly Q&A. Lots of other questions to be answered there. Um, thank you again for all your support over the years and your watching and your commenting and your ranting and raving at my expense. I truly appreciate and love all of it. You guys take care of yourself. I'm out.